What's up guys, it's Brad from Ladder Architect here. Today I'm going to be going through the compositing breakdown of our recently uploaded Blender 3D Jet Explosion animation. In this video, I'll be going through all of the different compositing passes and effects that we added to those passes in order to get the final result that you see now. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. This is our final result and final composite here. I'll go ahead and play through the video for you one more time in its entirety. And we use several different techniques to create this animation. Inside of Blender, we use an explode modifier to destroy the wing here. And of course, our chaos add-on fuel and particle debris fields baked in a Mantaflow simulation. If you want to see a specific scene breakdown inside of Blender, I'll put a link to that video in the description. We uploaded that last week. But this video will be covering the compositing process inside of After Effects of all the different layers that we used. All right, let's get started in going through this composite layer by layer. I'll go ahead and deselect our top layers here so we can focus on one layer at a time. All right, so the first two layers of our composite are the background environment and sky for our animation. These were rendered out in Blender, and as you probably know if you saw the previous video inside of Blender, these are just basic images that we put inside of Blender and then turn them into emission layers to turn them into plates and kind of build an environment. I rendered out this background projection as well as everything else separately just so I could have a lot more control over the motion blur and other aspects of effects that we added to it. As you can see here under the effects panel we've added two different blur effects to the background. We've added the camera lens blur and the directional blur and if I go ahead and bring this up here and turn them off you can see that it's much sharper in the background and you can even see some of the stitching issues that we had for the environment. But again like I said in the previous video sometimes adding a little bit of motion blur can help you sell an effect a lot better. Not saying you should let that slide and just have stitching issues in your background but it can uh, help to know if you're on a deadline you want to get a video out faster that uh, you know when you know you're gonna add some motion blur to it it might not be as prevalent in your scene so yeah we added a camera lens blur effect to this background as well as a directional blur and as you can see it kind of blends the background into the scene a little bit better as the camera is moving through the scene and you would expect it to have some motion blur if the camera were moving this fast we rendered out this environment projection on an alpha channel so that we could add whatever sky we wanted in this black background here. What I did for the sky, however, was super simple. All I did was create a solid background of this uh, kind of blue sky color and uh, essentially just left it there the entire scene because there's not any detail in it. You can't really notice that it's not even moving at all with the rest of the mountain. So I would have probably animated the sky or 3D tracked it into the scene if it were a clouds background of some sort, but because there's no detail in the color itself, it doesn't really matter that it's totally uh, stagnant in the scene as you can't really tell that it's not moving so uh, yeah that was our sky color background just a uh, blue background kind of chose the color of a sky that I liked and then I just brightened it up with a curve setting to match the color of the mountains that we have in the scene a little bit more anyways next we added the jet firefight passes as you can see I added several of them here in order to uh, mask out certain parts of the jet when it explodes more specifically but uh, pretty much all this layer is is the jet along with the explode modifier on the wing rendered out with an alpha channel again so that we could composite with uh, our own specific desired amount of motion blur and color correction and all that good stuff and uh, yeah I'll go ahead and show it without the environment here really quick so that was our layer and then we added a little bit of directional blur to it as well as you can see I added some directional blur and then I rotated it. As you can see, if we turn it off, it's much sharper, but we wanna add a little bit of energy to the scene. So we added this and then uh, rotated the direction down to the side so that our blur would be going horizontally. And uh, yeah, that was it for this layer, pretty simple. The next thing that we added was our explosion pass. So as you can see here, when we turn it on, we'll go to the part of the explosion. And this is our explosion without any glow or glare added to it. I've done a little bit of uh, masking around the edge here just to uh, prevent the explosion from going too off to the left because I wanted to see the jet go off into the background and the explosion was getting a little bit too far over there. So just a basic mask here and I put it on subtract mode so that the uh, explosion didn't go over here where our jet would finally end up in the scene. And on this explosion pass, I'll go ahead and isolate it here by itself. On this explosion pass, we added some directional blur, some uh, basic color correction through 
through the curves effect to kind of brighten it up and bring it into the scene a little bit more and then some uh, radial blur which essentially kind of creates an outward blur from wherever you put the uh, centered point here on your layer itself and I'll go ahead and show you guys this without any uh, effects added to it and as you can see we have some pretty good detail in the fire here but it's important to think about not necessarily the amount of detail that's in the original render but how it would interact in the scene if it were being filmed with a live action camera so that's why of course we added the directional blur to have it interact in the environment more and then our radial blur which uh, essentially made it a lot more explosive which of course it's an explosion so why wouldn't it have some kind of explosive motion blur on it and then again our curves I'll go ahead and turn on the background here to show you what the curves did so as you can see when we enable the curves on this layer it just helps to blend it into the environment background a little bit more and create a sense that we're in the same world as our environment and uh, yeah that was it for our explosion pass our next layer we added some glow to the explosion itself using our emission pass output from blender as you can see here when we turn this on we get some really nice glow in the bright spots of the explosion as i've talked about before the emission pass is super valuable when you're trying to composite explosions because it's just isolating those parts the image that are emitting light so if I go to uh, just show this emission pass by itself here you can see that literally the emission pass is just the part of the explosion that's emitting light and I know I've talked about this before but just wanted to emphasize it that it's really uh, helpful in bringing all of your composites together and in addition to adding some glow to this emission pass I've also added some directional blur as well I've also done some color mapping with the hue and saturation node here I brought down the reds and yellows and decreased the saturation a little bit because they're just a little bit too saturated for our scene in my opinion so I brought that down with the hue and saturation and hue and saturation is a super cool effect because you can change the channel that you're working with and then within that red channel or yellow channel or you know whatever one of these colors you want to work with you can change the saturation level and the lightness of that specific color channel which can be super helpful when you're trying to get a specific look for your explosion maybe you didn't get enough red in your explosion material when you were exporting from blender and then you can bring in the hue and saturation node bring up the red saturation bring down the red lightness to get a little bit Bit more of a red dense look which is kind of uh, what we did here so yeah that was one of the effects we added to our emission layer as well and then as i said before we added these three different glow layers to just brighten up the bright spots and uh, give it that glow effect and actually the reason we added three different glow effects here is because i like to use them to isolate different parts of the explosion using the uh, threshold settings here what i typically try to do is the first one i try to isolate just the hottest and the brightest parts of the explosion and then correspondingly the next one will have a little bit more of the explosion included in it and then finally the last one will just be an overall glow on the entire emission layer for the explosion and again I'm controlling that through the uh, and again I'm playing around with the threshold and the glow radius as well as uh, changing the colors of the glow here which I generally turn to orange and red but you can change that to whatever color you want your explosion to be and uh, yeah that was our emission pass layer I'll go ahead and deselect it here and show you it overlaid on top of our original explosion as you can see it's adding a lot more punch to the initial explosion definitely uh, pretty critical to creating a better looking composite the next thing I added was just a very basic solid glow using just a uh, new solid here I imported a solid made it uh, orange yellow type material and then I just uh, added it on top of our explosion here and I just did it as you can see here in the timeline I just did it for literally a few frames here just to create that initial punch from the explosion and I'll go ahead and show you guys without the other two explosion layers I'll go ahead and show you guys what the uh, solid glow is doing by itself I don't even know if you can see it but it's pretty subtle it's just brightening up the frames right when the explosion starts you can see it right here just a very subtle glow and I think I turned the opacity way down on this one as well yeah to 10% barely even there all this is guys is just a mask around an orange solid and then I turned the layer mode to add and boosted the feathering way up and I'll go ahead and just show you guys with the opacity way up this is literally all it is guys I just brought the opacity way down to make it much less subtle and I just wanted to emphasize the initial blast so again that's why it's just for a few frames and uh, yeah that was our next layer I'll go ahead and turn the other explosion layers back on the next layer that we added was a duplicate of our original jet pass for this specific layer I just wanted to mask out the debris so that it was over the top of our fuel explosion as you can see here when we turn it off the explosion and the uh, solid glow effect that we added were kind of covering the jet wing explosion here a little bit and when we turn this back on it's just a little bit more prevalent in the scene and if we go a little further I think it's even a better example 
yeah as you can see here i just wanted to make that wing explosion a little bit more prevalent so i just did some masking around our wing explosion and then put that over the top of everything and again i'm adding some directional blur here on that layer as well just to bring it into the scene a little bit more all right, so the next two layers of our composite was the missile render that we added to uh, hit our jet here when it explodes. These two layers are pretty subtle, so I'll go ahead and isolate them by themselves really quick. As you can see in the full composite here, there's a uh, jet missile here that hits the wing. And then that layer turns off as soon as the uh, wing starts exploding. And I'll go ahead and isolate those for you just so we can play through it by itself super simple here all this is here is a uh, render of a missile and i've just turned on the motion blur settings here in the render layer i added some directional blur initially but it was actually too much for the render itself so i just turned on the motion blur layer here as i did with the rest of these as well as you can see and there's a little rotation in the missile itself but there's not enough time to even notice the detail in this it's just so quick it just hits the jet and disappears but yeah for our composite i also added a little uh, jet blast here i called it missile propulsion here but literally this is just some automatic fire from a gunshot effect pack that's why it kind of flashes as it it's uh, coming into the scene here. Not really optimal, but pretty quick for a jet propulsion. So if you have any uh, muzzle flashes for like silenced gunfire or something, you can actually use those as a uh, somewhat effective missile uh, afterburner type look. I might even put this as the afterburner to a jet or something if I really needed to. But uh, yeah, those were our next two layers, just the uh, missile propulsion and the missile render. That was one of the last things that we added. I thought it was kind of nice to have a reason for the explosion itself so the jet didn't just explode out of nowhere, obviously, even though this was just more of a test. I just thought it kind of made more sense. But uh, yeah, anyways, the last layers that we composited into our explosion were all of our chaos debris fields. As you saw in the previous video, we added several different uh, glass and sparks debris fields utilizing the chaos add-on inside of Blender. I rendered out the glass and sparks debris field separately. And then as you can see here, I've actually duplicated those renders to uh, put these sparks and glass debris in different parts of our jet explosion itself. So as you can see here, if we turn them on, we have a lot of different debris going on here. Go ahead and turn off the uh, rest of the scene here and play through it by itself. So as you can see here, I've actually duplicated different uh, particle debris fields that we rendered out and then just added them wherever I thought was necessary. And uh, of course, I could just overlay them exactly where they were inside of the 3D scene as they were rendered, and that would probably work too. But sometimes it's nice to just duplicate the debris field since you already have it, you've already rendered it out, and then you can just place it wherever you want it, maybe retime it a little bit so that it doesn't look exactly the same as the previous one. And then, yeah, you have a lot more debris to play around with and you can get a much more you know violent looking explosion. So I'll go ahead and go through it layer by layer here just for the sake of this example. The first thing that we added here was our glass particles. As you can see here, it's just kind of blending into our explosion right now. And under the effects panel, I've added some radial blur to it to give a little bit more explosiveness to this layer. The next layer is just a duplicate of the same glass layer. So I'll go ahead and turn this one on as well. And as you can see here, it's making it a little bit more dense. And sometimes if your debris isn't showing up that well, you can just duplicate it once and it's gonna be a lot more prevalent in your scene. And then you can also play with the opacity of each layer as well in case you want to dial it back a little bit then we have our next few layers here our sparks layers go ahead and turn this one on I labeled this one sparks back because I wanted to add some sparks to the right of the explosion here and again we've added some radial blur to it to kind of blend everything together and we've also it's important to note that we've rendered out these particle debris fields from blender with motion blur and it's actually important when you're using these sparks debris fields inside of chaos to render with motion blur because that motion blur that you render out through blender tends to be a little bit better for for different debris fields. So a lot of the time I'll render out those debris fields with a little bit of motion blur already, which is what I did here. And then I'll just enhance it with a little radial blur or directional blur inside of the compositor. And uh, yeah, our last three layers are just more sparks debris fields that we added. This one here is just a duplicate of the last one. As you can see, it's just enhancing what's already there. And then uh, we have some sparks that we added to the front here, as you can see here, and then a duplicate of that to uh, bring it out into the scene a little bit more. We've also added radial blur to these as well in some cases keyframing the amount depending on where the sparks are in the scene at the moment and uh, yeah finally we added an adjustment layer with some lumetri color here to uh, kind of give a little bit of color correction cinematic look to it and then a letterbox for that widescreen look and uh, yeah this was our final composite with glow and all those different particle systems added to it I was pretty happy with the result obviously it's not perfect but it was definitely fun to create and a learning process for me as well I'm definitely gonna make some similar projects soon so stay tuned for those if you're interested as always Feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. I'll see you guys next time.